Okay, I'm live now. I have got the Spotify audio on in the background, so I haven't really had a chance to test out my levels in a live environment. And I thought the music would help me concentrate more, but it makes me almost more self-aware of my talking. So I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but I think it would actually be more entertaining for some people because I know it's when I'm working, I do get like concentration and I don't want to talk much and I become deaf to things when I'm that focused anyway. So I feel like having the music is a good idea. I'm using Stream Beats, which is something created by Ninja Gaming. I think it's his proper channel, but I actually, I can show you because I've got the, where is it? If you want to be able to find it, you have to search. Oh my god, was it? Harris something or other? I don't know. Maybe that's the individual song. But it's Stream Beats Official on Spotify, and it's created by a YouTuber and a streamer who his whole thing is he wanted people who stream to be able to have copyright free music. And although he's had glitches where some people have got flagged for using it, it's actually totally okay to use it online. And I wanted to credit him, but we're not required to. This playlist that I've got on now is the EDM Stream Beats playlist. And hopefully it's good because I kind of like some of the music on it and I like EDM and I feel like it's quite funny that the colour palette on the album artwork is the same colour palette that I like using, which is just by lighting anyway. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I had a plan for today. I am going to be going onto my website to create something called a parent page. So if you're not aware what a parent page is, the concept of on a website, you have pages, which are considered really permanent things that are used to like build your authority in a certain sector and be able to talk about the subject matter and prove that you know what you're talking about to customers basically, or you know, whoever is intended to come look at your audience. A post is separate a post is considered a more temporary niche down subject matter. So say a news article where you go on like Manchester Evening News, for example, you had a article talking about someone who was murdered today because, you know, someone's always getting murdered and that would be a post on their website. You also have products which are slightly different because it's e-commerce, but they function in the same sense as posts. So a post would be based either on the content of it or on the... My hand got blocked here because there's a boom stand. <laughs> Uh, a post is like where you have just temporary stuff like it becomes irrelevant basically and pages are considered evergreen content so within post you have these things called categories and then you can put things inside certain categories but in pages you have the parent page which is the main subject matter page and you have child pages or, you know, like sub pages, but child pages is the proper term. And child pages go within the parent page. So the parent page kind of acts like a category. And then the sub child pages are based on more niche down subject matter within the original parent category. So on my own website, I have got child pages for digital marketing subjects and content creation subjects. So stuff like photography, videography. Um, SEO, social media. I'm going to make one for email marketing as well because I know email marketing now a bit. Um, but <laughs> I haven't actually done the parent pages because I thought when I originally made my mega menu that I could just name the... I will I literally just get my website up and show you. So if I go on visit store on a new tab. So here's my home page. And I have these drop down items like videography, photography, let's go on that for example. And then you can go down there and it's got a little bit of content about it. Although I feel like I need to flesh out the text content in here a bit more. And then you can switch between different types of things. This leads to a separate sub page because there's like different categories. Um, but like product imagery and that loads in there. And then I've got landscape imagery. I actually have some new ones to add to sports need to add some more sports ones because I have galleries waiting for that but this is a child page within the content creation category unfortunately I thought you could make it on the mega menu where you can just not click on the parent page but you need it to be able to put it in the menu so in the meantime I've actually got a hyperlink to my posts category of content creation 
because I have a categorical content creation for my posts as well, which is the more temporary stuff, which is supposed to ex exist exclusively within the blog page. So my job today is to create parent pages for, I'm going to start with digital marketing, but I need one for content creation as well. So we'll just work out what content to actually put in there. Now, if we go, I'm going to close this tab. If we go into how to cre actually create a page, then, you know, I can't see top chat one moment. I want to be able to see top chat in case people are actually talking to me because I don't want to be ignoring people if that's an option. Let's see. Not on profile tools. Don't want automatic scene switcher. Don't want that. Don't want that. Docs. There we go. Chats. Anyone talking to me in chat? Take it off top chat. We want live chat. I have no idea if this updates after I've opened it or not. Let's hope that people haven't been getting ignored. Yeah. Let's put a little... Oh, wait a minute, do I need to sign in? This is... wait. Uh, still learning how to live stream. I feel like I've got the actual setup on this end down. It's just the actual nuances of using the software now. Oh. So I'm just putting in my password and logging in. I have a million emails, so I have to actually remember my password. Yes, I can verify it's me. Yes, it's me. Okay. Oh my god, this is crazy. Now I can see my own stream along with live chat at the same time. <laughs> this is crazy. It discovers the most basic function. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I feel so much better about this now. All right, that's fine. Although it's weird seeing myself in lag, so I'm going to slightly close that a little bit so I can't see it. Oh, I can hear myself. I don't want to be able to hear myself. Get away. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Mute. Mute myself. Okay. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> Oh wait, am I being ratted out that I don't use <laughs> the premium Spotify? Oh, I hope the ads don't get me in trouble. I don't know how that's going to work out. Oh, please don't flag me. It's not like these are monetized anyway, but I would like to be able to do that eventually. So maybe don't do that. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to talk over the advert over and over and over again. By the way, it is hot here. Like I have been sat with my window open briefly and I had that door open so I could have airflow through my balcony window. But... I'm absolutely melting. I'm not designed for temperatures of any extreme. <laughs> I have got like there's drilling going on downstairs as well because the landlord wants to build a gym or something. So they've got loads of construction going on. And it's really, even with a directional condenser studio microphone, the noise is so loud because it reverberates through the wall and I'm quite low down. So it's not got a lot of time to dissipate through the building. So I can hear the sound through my closed window when the mic is pointed just at my face. So I really hope it's not audible. But yeah, okay. So let's get down to the job. Hotkey. Oh my God. Hotkeying is really useless when it doesn't actually take you to where you want to be. Uh, I'm gonna have to change my hotkey setup because right now I've got it on some command keys. I'm gonna have to set it up for like keys I never ever use in really weird combinations. This is why people have stream decks but I haven't invested in a stream deck yet because, you know, what's the point in that when I have, like, just a few streams in my history? Okay, so I am using WordPress, which is a CMS, a content management system, which is a system people use to put their websites on. It's basically what you use when you don't want to be doing raw codey nonsense, and I am not a web developer. So I am a web designer, but I'm not a web developer. Right now we're doing some design. I don't do any custom CMS or anything like that. Not that I'm against it, it's just it's not a skill I've ever taken the time to learn, and every attempt I've made has been fruitless. So we are in WordPress right now, and I use a plugin called Elementor. So we are going to create a new page. Yeah, you can see my screen. So I'm gonna create a new page and because I want to build it in Elementor, which is a plugin I buy the premium version of, it's basically a drag and drop editor that allows you a lot of customization for branding purposes. So we click edit in Elementor. Just 
actually in my bottle by the way. This is Gucci. You are awesome. And I got it at Summer in the City. I think the last time I went to Summer in the City, I can't remember what year it was for life me, but I was like a teenager, like 16, 17. And the person who was at the table, I don't remember who you were or what your business name was, but it bought from you. This is adorable and I love it. I'm clearly getting use out of it years later, but it was like 20 pounds for a glass bottle. <laughs> and this straw didn't come with it, so. Like, I know the printing process isn't exactly, like, easy, but... Wow. <laughs> like, your margins must have been amazing. <laughs> okay, so... Did I just knock my mic a bit too close to my face? There we go. So, we are going to go into our settings for the page. The title is going to be Content Creation. This is a draft right now. Once it's complete, I can put in the hierarchy of where this page is. So it will be known to the CMS that it is a parent page, but until then it's just a normal page. So a lot of this stuff we add later, once we've actually built it out. I always hide my title so I can put it in in the certain way I want styled. So it still functions for the SEO of the page. This is all stuff that we would do for metadata, which is mentioned in one of my recent videos, which is how to do an SEO blog post. So the concept of metadata is all acknowledged there. Oh, redirects. No. I use the all-in-one SEO plugin just because I like how it is. And then this is what you do custom JavaScript or custom CSS. I don't know what that one stands for, but I don't do any of that stuff. So no worries. Scroll snap. Don't want that. So we're going to go out of the page settings and go into the widget settings. So this is my SEO page, which I built out in the exact same fashion. I want the style to mirror the SEO page in my digital marketing page because SEO is going to be one of the child pages within the parent page of digital marketing. So Elementor has this really neat function where you can just copy paste sections here. So I'm going to copy this. I hope we're not going to end up in some awkward non-transferable problem because I created some of these pages before a update which changed the sections like containers and I'm not sure how it directly translates because I know that any new pages will be created in the new system so I may have to learn how to do some stuff but we'll see but what's great is you can copy the widget itself the section itself or you can just paste the style of what you copied without actually having the same content so maybe you wrote out a body of text and you decide you don't want it to look like that you want it to look like something you made previously so you can just change it there so instead of SEO we are going to have digital marketing I feel like I wrote content creation earlier. I didn't mean it to be, but that's great. We can change it. Yeah, <laughs> stupid brain. Digital marketing. I say stupid brain. Pretty sure I just have undiagnosed ADHD, but whatever. So what else do I want to copy? I want to copy the settings here because it has padding of certain nature I want to use. And then we paste it into the new widget sections, then we would change the text here. So the text of this section is like the main introductory paragraph of talking about digital marketing. So it's hard to know what to put into a page that I never wanted to exist before. So essentially I'm going to go search engine optimization brain and think what do I need to include for my page to show up when people search something which is either the phrase digital marketing which is a highly competitive phrase and I doubt I'd ever become the first result on Google for that but I could be like they'll say what is digital marketing so I have some information in a PowerPoint I created previously it's like an audit for someone so these people are presenting to had no I like no people with a digital marketing background so I wanted to contextualize a lot of the information before I went into an audit so the idea of digital marketing is to get your audience member your customer your new client through a sales funnel online 
and it talks about the concept of touch points. So I feel like this is the sort of information I want to include. This one's hard because it's content creation versus digital marketing. I don't want to create any duplicate content on my website, so I can't necessarily put these on the same pages. I feel like these two slides are primarily what I'm going to use for my digital marketing page, and then this slide is going to be primarily what I use for my content creation page. These aren't going to be massive pages, admittedly, but we can always build them out later. Obviously can't use these images because I don't own the copyright to them. This was just for a private use. So let's see. I just want to do some research. What comes up on Google when you search digital marketing? What shows up in the very first result? What is digital marketing? Mailchimp. Mailchimp is a very valuable CRM or email marketing platform. So what does Mailchimp say digital marketing is? Any marketing that uses electronic devices and can be used by marketing specialists to convey promotional messaging and measure its impact for your customer journey. In practice, digital marketing typically refers to marketing campaigns that appear on a computer, phone, tablet or other device. It can take many forms, including online video, display ads, search engine marketing, paid social ads, social media posts. Digital marketing is often compared to traditional marketing, such as magazine ads, billboards and direct mail. Oddly, television is usually lumped in with traditional marketing. That's a solid point actually. I would imagine that television is lumped in with traditional marketing because it's a non-interactive platform. I feel like, I feel like it's not the use of electronics that really defines digital marketing. I think it's the interactivity basis. And although obviously stuff on television that was like red button or you can press this button to signal this in a vote or whatever. I feel like digital marketing really requires the viewer, the audience, the customer to take active participation in it as a put it's like it's passive, but it it allows the viewer to directly interact with the medium. Like for example, if let's say online video someone could click on the video and then they can skip through it they can re-watch different elements if someone saw a display ad then it appears on their timeline and then they can click it to go find out what they want to achieve if someone sees a billboard out in the street then they have to go to another platform and another device because they just see it with their eyes so if they wanted to actually respond to the ad, they have to go online anyway. They have to transfer to a digital marketing platform if they can't immediately walk into a store and talk to a staff member, or if they can't immediately, like, <laughs> they can't ring someone up. It goes away from the first stage of the marketing funnel, which is making them aware, which is if we go into the marketing funnel. So you have the interest, making them aware of the product or the service, that would be the billboard. The desire and the need, the customer starts doing research. So when they enter their research phase, they have to transfer to a different tool than what had introduced them to the concept. So what else? Like, right. Social media, whether it's paid or organic, you see stuff and you can comment on it, you can share it, you can send it to other people, sort of spread the word about it that way. But I feel like that's something that you can't achieve with traditional media. Like the closest equivalent you can get with TV is maybe telling someone to come sit down next to you and observe it with you. <coughs> <coughs> I feel like that's why it ends up with traditional marketing. Like the pre-internet era, it's purely the interactivity element. Feel free to tell me if you think I'm wrong in the comments or whatever or in chat. But I feel like that's uh, the closest equivalent we're going to get for that sort of thing. I've cropped myself on chat. Don't do that. Move that over here. Do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's my opinion on why TV is in traditional media. Now, this is a long page. I am not going to be able to compete with this page. Because this is essentially talking about... Yep, I was just going to say, this is how to create a digital marketing strategy benefits of digital marketing now this is all stuff that I definitely would like to include but I feel like 
I'm not gonna be able to compete with this page exactly. So it's not that I'm not trying. It's just that I don't really have a desire to focus my energy on this right now because like with SEO, I talk about the general concept of SEO, how many types of SEO are there? And then I just talk about on-page, off-page and technical SEO. So what am I going to write for mine? And now I've done my research by looking at the MailChimp one. Very conscious of trying not to do plagiarism, but there's this thing of like, oh, there's no original stuff online anyway. So I'm not going to copy paste. I'm going to think from my own brain. Well, what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about the difference between that and traditional marketing. So digital marketing is a facet of marketing that Nah. Welcome to the writing process. Digital marketing is an umbrella term used for a number of marketing channels that are used to take your audience, customer, or visitor I guess through the sales funnel using the internet digital marketing This can be completed through a number of means online, such as social media, both organic and paid, PPC ads. No, 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 no. So, such as both organic and paid social media, search engine results, PPC advertisements, email marketing. Video mm. I've recently wondered like PR I'm not depthy in terms of my knowledge on the world of PR. I understand it, but I'm not really sure how a lot of people go about completing their tasks in PR. I recently learned the term newsjacking, which I thought was quite cool. Newsjacking is something that I feel like we're all familiar with of just jumping on the bandwagon, but it's basically you monitor the news to see if something relevant to your purpose, your organization, your goal has cropped up in a breaking news story and then you make yourself relevant to it. So let's say that a wildfire has just broken out somewhere and you sell um, fire PPE safety equipment, then you would say how people involved in that could use your service to prevent harm to themselves. Okay? I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's a relative good acknowledgement of how that works. So, one minute, just want to check something. Okay, 
I was just checking my stats, but I don't really know <laughs> what most of those things mean. I haven't dropped any frames, so that's that's good enough for me. Okay, so I'm going to include PR in that. Digital marketing is an umbrella term used for a number of marketing channels that are used to take your audience, customer, or visitor through the sales funnel using the internet. This can be completed for a number of means online, such as both organic and paid social media, search engine results, PPC advertisement, email marketing, video, PR, and more. Digital marketing is often compared to traditional marketing, such as print, printed materials, such as printed materials, radio as well. Radio isn't really considered digital marketing. Podcasts I've always thought are just kind of online radio because they're defined by not being able to see people. But then you've also been able to add video to your podcast streaming platform. So then it becomes the question of what's the difference between a podcast and a live stream? I would say the podcast is more conversational in that it doesn't really like it may have a set format it may be more like a a show like a live stream i'm just doing what i'm doing here i'm allowing other people to watch me i'm being casual about it i'm just sort of chilling out with the intention of doing a back and forth uh, if anyone feels the need to ask me a question about what i'm doing but a podcast is like purely between the people in the room producing it i feel like that's de that's the differentiation between a podcast a live stream a radio show um, radio has the interactive elements in that people can call in on the phone but like I said that is a separate medium to how the information is being communicated it has to be a separate channel so yeah I feel like this really adds to my point of what's the difference between traditional and digital marketing and it's the interactivity on the medium being used okay I need to be able to communicate this point in words now <laughs> Digital marketing is often compared to traditional marketing, such as printed materials, radio. Printed materials, let's do this. Printed materials, events. Oh, what's it called when people like stand out and hand out items? Mm. Merch giveaways? No, I feel like that's not it. See, that is PR. That's public relations, but like. In a put in a like their sense. What are some other examples that Mailchimp use? Because that's not stealing. That's just their own things. Magazine, magazine ads. It's print media. Billboards. I said billboards earlier. Okay. Billboards. Merch giveaways. Billboards. No wait, wait. Merchandise stalls. There we go billboards, postal, mail. And postal mail. There is often debate about what makes something digital marketing versus traditional marketing, leaving the likes of radio and TV up for debate. Oh, am I doing we or I? I try to keep my brand kind of faceless in that it was like, <laughs> not that I'm trying to make it look like I'm bigger than I am, but because sometimes I work with subcontractors when I need help completing projects, but I'm trying to move into a more personalized brand. Like people know it's me, it's just me here but I'm the only employee of my business because I'm self-employed. But no, I'm not going to make it an I. But we believe, because people, if anyone happens to be on here as a landing page, then they won't know. They may not have visited the About the Owner page yet, which is up here, which is basically a little bio about myself. Um, leaving the likes of radio and TV up for debate. But we believe that D, that D, that the defining factor 
in what makes something digital marketing or not is the interactivity of the marketing material I don't like how this is lined up with the words marketing all here but if I actually centralize the style like on every other page then that makes it less aligned at least a little bit um, Okay, I do feel like the music is helping me with this, to be honest. If anyone else likes the playlist, let me know. I can find a different one, but I think that's really good. So good vibe I'm creating. So we believe the defining factor in what makes digital marketing and what makes something digital marketing or not is the interactivity of the marketing material. TV and radio would be classified as traditional due to the fact that you would need to find a resource outside of the material itself to take the next step in the marketing now in the sales funnel process Yes, you can call up a radio show to speak to the host. However, you're required to go out of your way to complete that step. If you were to click on a social media post you could comment share interact with other members of the audience and the poster themselves all on the initial material you Found. It would then only take a few clicks to close the sale. Let me see. Let me see. So let me read this all out. Digital marketing is an umbrella term used for a number of marketing channels that are used to take your audience, customer or visitor through the sales funnel using the internet. This can be completed for a number of means online, such as both organic and paid social media, search engine results, PPC advertisement, email marketing, video PR and more. Digital marketing is often compared to traditional marketing, such as printed materials, events, merchandise stalls, billboards, and postal mail. There is often debate about what makes something digital marketing versus traditional marketing, leaving the likes of radio and TV up for debate. Due to their electronic nature, We believe, that we believe that the defining factor in what makes something digital marketing or not is the interactivity of the marketing material. TV and radio would be classified as traditional due to the fact that you would need to find a resource outside of the market outside the material itself to take the next step in the sales funnel process. Yes, you can call up a radio show to speak to the host, however you're required to go out of your way to complete that step. If you were to click on a social media post, you could comment, share, interact with other members of the audience and the post themselves, all in the initial material you found. It would then only take a few clicks to close the sale. This level of interactivity is defined now, this level of interactivity is exclusive to the internet and therefore digital marketing could possibly be an interchangeable term with internet. 
marketing. Maybe that's me making a bold claim, but that's what I believe. <laughs> so I'm going to say that first paragraph is done. That's my introductory opening paragraph. It's actually a bigger paragraph than any of the opening paragraphs I've got in any of my child pages for digital marketing, but maybe that's a good thing because it is a parent page. It's supposed to be the more overarching nature of it. And I've been meaning to flush out these other pages over time, so yay me. So let me go back onto my SEO page. So these are like page dividers I have. Does, do I just have a separate section for my page divider? What's going on there? No? What's going on with my na I mean, navigator? section. I can't just have a section for... Okay, that's part of the heading section. Right, okay. Well, I'm going to copy that and see what happens. So, copy, paste. Yeah, the divider just goes really high. <laughs> okay, that's fine, that's fine. Alright, so instead of how many types of SEO are there, I'm going to go to my PowerPoint that I have and talk about Okay, what is the sales funnel? Because we're talking about digital marketing is getting people through the sales funnel. So what is the sales funnel? I like that. What is the sales funnel? Yeah, question mark. Can I make this a H2 header? Yes, this is a H2 header. Go HTML text. I guess that is because I just copy pasted, so. Okay, so now I'm going to copy this section. Oh, something about the music just made my brain tingle. <laughs> I don't know, like maybe the piano. The piano caught me out. Okay, paste. So we don't want this image to be here. I'm going to have to find a different image later. Honestly, maybe I'll have to take some images for this because I haven't taken my own brand photography in a while. And I don't think I have anything in my bank that is applicable and not already in use. So maybe I'll live stream a shoot sometime. I've not done that for a while. I would love to live stream a shoot. Never, like, maybe I've never live streamed a photo shoot. I'm not sure. Be a bit more awkward to set up because my camera that I'm using for live streaming is my webcam, but I'm sure I can just set the laptop in a more convenient place. <laughs> okay, so trash this image for now. No image there. So what is the sales funnel? Hmm. Now I would justify different Maybe H3 tags for each section of the sales funnel. How many points do I want to have here? Because this will determine how I split it up. So. Sales funnel, so one, two, three, four. Touch points, five. Less. No, you know, no, I'm gonna split this into several seconds. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So. What is the sales funnel? Step one, interest. Is it? I've already forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The first step of the sales funnel is making your customer aware that you even exist. They've never interacted with your organization before. I have a lot more notes on. I actually already knew about the sales funnel but one time my old employer got me to go on a short one day course online with a speaker about like sales essentials and they basically just went over what is the sales funnel um, and I 
can't say. <laughs> it sounds really cocky to be like, I learned nothing. But I did make some really good notes that day that I might be able to refer to now. And I'm just trying to look for it. So let me just uh, enjoy my face for a moment. Let me see. The question is, how long ago was this? All right, that's a, that's a worse old job. Okay. We're almost there because remember this is quite early on in my employment there. This is an old notebook I had. Oh, I've got these pages in this book. What a waste. I'm sure the fact that I'm looking for notes on this might imply some people that's not in my brain, but why would I waste time trying to reline how I wrote something when I wrote it great the first time? <coughs> <coughs> Repurposing content is not just a concept that you can use in your digital marketing. <laughs> it's a time-saving tool. Why are my pages all stuck together? There's never any got wet. There's never any got wet. It's never got wet, this book. This book has never got wet. I could talk. Oh my god, found it! Right. Okay. Do you like my book, by the way? This was a present. I didn't pick this myself, but it's quite good. I do like jewels. I have a little gem collection somewhere. So what I wrote for the... See, this diagram actually separates it differently. Where is it? So if I go on to... Oh, that's the wrong one. So I go on to my powerpoint this one actually has it is four stages which is interest making the customer aware of you i basically made it line up with this graphic i found <laughs> instead of making my own graphic so it's got interest desires and needs solution fit and the close but i would argue that <sighs> excuse me but i would argue that the five separated ones are a bit better so the five stages of the bio process according to the notes that i wrote in my sales essentials course is one interest making your customer aware of the product service seeing the initial piece of marketing material two is desires and needs so the customer will do their research ask questions find out the opinion leaders in the sector because maybe it's something they've never bought before they don't know anything about it the solution fit is step three which is here so who is the best supplier for the service who do you want to actually trust with your money for it so I don't know how to describe it. So yes, you know the thing. You need to learn about the thing you need and then you need to learn about the best person to do the thing you need um, because you need to be able to communicate to them what you want them to do or what you need from them. So then number four is select the supplier. Um, so like some people could say this fits into solution fit, but I honestly like that it's split up. Um, so select supplier who some people offer something called a sweetness that's like high perceived value at low cost to you uh, this is where you talk about the terms and conditions of it so maybe you'll choose someone based off like you don't like that you have to read a contract and sign it maybe someone's got a little like drop shipped option that you can just click go um maybe if you want to negotiate any terms so if they have a minimum term of three four months but you only want to do one month as a trial maybe something like that that might determine who you select as your individual supplier. So then you've got the place order. So they know you, they trust that you know what you're doing, they want your service, you just gotta close the sale, get the money. So I'm gonna take the five step approach when I write this up. Let's see. So step one, interest. No, you know what? I don't want to do it this way. I want to create a more of a list. I wonder if they've added a list widget to this. One moment. Hmm. 
No, not the kind of list I need. Okay, I'm going to separate this in a different way. Okay, yeah. So, step one, interest. The first step of the salesman is making your customer aware that you even exist. They've never been interacted with you. I think the reason I didn't want to do it that way is because it looks worse, but I've just realised like the most basic thing in the world is I can make the text bigger. Shocking. Uh, the first step of the sales funnel is making your customer aware that you even exist. They've never interacted with your organisation before until they come into contact with a piece of your marketing materials. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put another heading in there and paste the style. There you go. So step two, desire and needs. And then copy this. And we want a text editor. And paste the style. Get some good old lorem ips up. Um, this is the stage where your customer is doing their research into the industry you're related in. They may require a service but aren't aware of the specific service they need to ask for. This is the time where your customer will be finding the opinion leaders within the sector and asking a lot of questions to work out how to solve the problem they have. So maybe they, they know that that water's burst and they need a plumber, but they don't know what they need to tell the plumber is wrong. Da, da, da. Does this one really not have a spell check? I know what the spelling issue is, but it doesn't actually have a spell check, which is interesting. Problem. Problem they have. Okay. So then we repeat. And just duplicate this this time because that's faster. Drag it down. Step three. Solution. Duplicate and drag it down. Your customer now knows what the best service is, so they need to work out who the best person is to provide, provide said service product knowledge I guess can I hear a whistle I don't know maybe okay is it in the song or is it a bird I can hear it Oh my god, is it my chat? Oh, I'm making my chat squeak because I'm so focused. Okay, right. Let me see if I can notice this forward. I love my little foldy desk, but it's got this bar across like the bottom. <laughs> and it stops me being able to wheel my chair forward as close as I normally would. I could keep this desk happily forever if I just didn't have this freaking bar in the way. In theory, I could just saw the bar off, but then that's going to make collapsing it and putting it back a lot harder. <laughs> I almost never collapsed it now anyway, but I need the option, so... When I have a dedicated office room that isn't just my bedroom, then we can discuss that. 
I could technically have this in the living room and that could be like a half office, but I don't want that to be my living room. I want the living room to be able to be a cozy space. And I like streaming in here because I know no one could come in here. My flatmate could go into the living room. Uh, but yeah. So the customer now knows what the best services need to work out the best person to provide said product service knowledge. They'll be asking you questions relating to how you specifically can give them the results they need. Alright, step four. Maybe multiple providers are able to fit the solution they need. This would be the time to share your sweeteners in order to get your customer on board. Maybe you offer quick delivery, high perceived value for low monetary cost, or Oh, I always do that the wrong way. Uh, there's no spell check. I always do the IE the wrong way around for this sort of stuff. I feel like I lean forward so close. I actually am quite short sighted. <laughs> my, uh, my, op what is it called? Optician? I haven't been to an optician for a while. I actually know I need to. But my optician told me that I have perfect vision for what I do, which basically means you're great for staring at screens all day, but you can't look off into the distance. I allow my camera to do that for me when I'm shooting, but otherwise I just don't wear my glasses because I think I look horrible in them and I hate them and I'm sorry, I don't wear my glasses. Stop trying to convince me to wear my glasses. <laughs> I pretty much only have them for going to the cinema when I'm paying to look at something far away because I want the big screen experience and sitting at the back is the best. Or when I briefly took driving lessons and realized I hate driving, so legal requirement for driving. I may one day learn how to ride a bike, but like, <laughs> no, I can't bicycle, but I meant like a motorbike or a moped or something. I feel like that'd be better because being in a car just stressed me the hell out I could not do that but I feel like with a bike you're one with the vehicle a bit more you can feel the road and the movements and it's like more of an extension of your body than this thing you control so yeah that's why I don't wear my glasses <laughs> but even considering that when I'm looking at particularly small text, like what I'm looking at right there, I do kind of need to lean forward just to squint a little bit because, oh my god, my eyes suck. I do need an eye test. I know. Stop telling me to get an eye test. It's okay. <laughs> For the record, I have the best colour vision possible. So, my colour perception's amazing. <laughs> or a freebie included. All right, last step. Step five. The close. It's time to make the deal. Sign the contract. Hmm? Sign 
Time to make the deal. They trust you. You've qualified them as someone you want to work with. So sign the contract. Get the invoice paid. And ship out the order. Oh, I forgot about the T's and C's. Now would be the time to discuss terms and conditions of the purchase. Can you hear the drilling now? Maybe you can. City Center Living! <laughs> Quick chat check, do we have any? <laughs> I don't think we do. Oh well. Uh, by the way, if you want to check out my website while uh, while I'm doing this, the website I'm editing is www.dibdabdigital.com. Oh, I can't see my own response in the chat. Maybe people are talking to me and I just don't know. How can I know? Oh my god. Make it bigger? I'm still the only one, but oh well, at least now I know. <laughs> Uh, I feel like people who talk about oh, no one's watching my stream. I don't particularly care if anyone's watching live. I just know that when people watch it back, I prefer seeing people like interact with their viewers. So if I have anyone watching live, then it's great to hear what they're thinking about what I'm doing. Because then if I'm not being interesting or if you have a question about something I'm actually completing in the moment, then I'm able to explain it in the moment and I don't have to go back into the comments to look at it later. I feel like you get a much more coherent answer when I'm actually live on stream. Plus I had someone who was watching me who was like, oh, you should do a Q and A. And it's like, I don't really feel the need to do a Q and A. I've not that many cues. So if people have a question for me, the live stream is the time guys. <laughs> uh, right. So let's get back to working on the web page. The close. It's time to make the deal. They trust you, da 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 da. Okay. So I'm gonna need a portrait oriented style image to fill this space I imagine so I need to remember that remember that future me when you watch this back for notes because uh, I this might end up sitting in my drafts today because I don't have any appropriate images because I refuse to use stock imagery on my own website because I literally take photos and videography is like my primary skill set I will say so <laughs> I am not tolerating using someone else's <laughs> so let's get the next segment so we've got the nice smooth divider. We'll paste this. So again, let's delete the image. Because this is not the image we want. Empty image bar. So we're not talking about off-page SEO. We're now talking about touch points. What are touch points? Okay, now this is something I feel like I could talk about relatively well. I do need to actually also record video today. This is going on longer than I thought it would, so I, I, I've got... I've got my Taekwondo squad because I'm on a squad with the International Taekwondo Council in my free time because I do ITF style Taekwondo, not WT. I did go to Olympic trials briefly. Um, I actually have a martial arts channel, Deborah's Day, but I'm focusing on getting my content routine regular on this channel first before I start pasting on my martial arts stuff and then it goes all patchy and then it dies again. I feel like there's really no point in that. I'd rather just focus my energy here for a bit. Um, plus I'm building a home gym. So once the home gym's done, then I can actually create content for them much quicker. Um, but I'm on a squad and we have training tomorrow um, in Kidderminster at Russell Perks Martial Arts Academy. Shout out. It's a really cool facility. <laughs> um, and then I have my normal class on Sunday. And in addition to the traveling to get there, it just sucks up my time. I get home and I'm all sweaty and I'm not fit to record on camera and I'm dead and I can't have a personality. So I try and record on my days where I'm not training as much because like if I have to shower and then get fully dressed cause I just want to get into my pajamas afterwards. But if I don't leave, if I don't wake up soon enough or if I don't finish shooting before I have to go to training, then there's like inconsistency and 
I just like look icky and I can't be in my pajamas while I film. So a whole bunch of reasons. I want to record a video today. I, pr I wasn't going to do it on the sales funnel. I was going to do it on the difference between Facebook profiles, pages, posts, not posts, um, Facebook profiles, pages, groups, and events. But I'm really feeling the sales funnel now because I was going to talk about the sales funnel and why it's really a marketing funnel, you know, because only the last step is actually sales. Um, spoiler alert. <laughs> but no, I feel like I'll, I'll, I'll do that one in six. because that's where my brain's at right now. Okay, what are touch points? So let's go into my research here. So touch points, there was a guy called Dr. Jeffrey Lance, who in 1987 created a book called Money Making Marketing. So it's the internet did exist at this time. I'm pretty confident. I wasn't alive, but I'm pretty confident the internet existed. Watch me be really stupid and prove myself wrong. When was the internet invented? Because I'm pretty sure the internet was only for universities and then it got like more widespread. Okay, 1983. And that's in 1987, didn't it? <laughs> 1987. Okay, so he made this book like four years after the internet was invented and I feel like universities had a monopoly on that shit for a while, so maybe it was just when he was becoming aware of it. Okay, so... <laughs> da, 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 da. Where are you? Da. So, Dr. Jeffrey Lan had this concept called touch points, where a touch point is when you interact with an organization in any way. You just... You're aware of them. Like, I have no touch points with any kind of, I don't know, why, why is my brain saying surf shop in Hawaii? I have no connection to any of that. I have never done that. If I start getting posts for them now or ads, then I'm calling cult on my algorithm. But I have no touch points with any of those organizations, so I can never buy from them. It's impossible because I don't know who they are. I know where they are because they said Hawaii, but I don't know where in Hawaii and I will never buy their services. So a touch point is any interaction you have with a business. Now he thought of the rule of seven, which the concept was you needed at least seven. Da, 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 da. Wait, I feel like this is a time for face cam. So you needed at least seven touch points with an organization before you would actually complete a purchase from them. However, this notion has kind of evolved over time because, excuse me, I got a hiccup. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> this has evolved over time with the internet because we see so much more information on a daily basis and we're so oversaturated with information and data and people vying for your attention and we're all little goldfish in balls apparently, although I never thought that my attention span was as short as people claim. But you have seven touch points originally, but because of all the competitiveness online, it's become more like you need 21 touch points if you've got a really high value um, item or service that cost people a pretty penny to actually get, then you are going to need to have even more touch points. But it's always going to be in a multiple of seven because that's the rule. It's the rule of seven. Um, but a touch point is the really obvious ones people go with, like, let's say you bought his, you saw his book in a store. That is a touch point. You have seen it. There's also social media, emails, SMS, which is a text message, sign. Um, if someone literally recommends it to you, like if I said, go buy Dr. Jeffrey Lance's book, Money Making Marketing, then that's a touch point right there because I'm talking to you. Uh, advertisements, events, all that kind of stuff. But ones that people don't expect is also any communication you have like regarding to billing for a product or if so, <laughs> literally if you go into someone's office and then they ring you up later and say, so you left your wallet here then that is a touch point with that business. And if anything, it's a really positive one because they were like, oh, they're so kind. They really value me as a person. They're like, they didn't just take it and run. So anything is a touch point. So an interaction with the business, you need a lot of them. You need like, <laughs> you need like 700 ideally. You need constant ones, but this is just what a touch point is. And the idea is more touch points you have with an organization, the more likely you are to actually buy from them because they're constantly dominating your headspace. So now I need to communicate that into words. <laughs> there you go, nice, yeah, that one. Oh, before I dive into this though, I am gonna have a little, get a new drink because I am thirsty. So I'm going to, what am I gonna do? I'm on face cam right now. So I'm going to leave my music running and I'm going to leave you with Wailord. <laughs> Can you see him? Yeah, I hope you can see him. Wait. <laughs> no, wait. I really want to get the mic up to his face. Wait. 
Let's just pretend Whale Lord's DJing for now. Yes, I did hop over my bed because it's easier than moving the chair because I kind of seal this gap when I move the chair here. <laughs> so I have come bearing my Tim Hortons iced French vanilla uh, with squirt cream on it and some chocolate powder sugar that I got from Tesco's. It is official Tim Hortons because I buy the powder from the store and it's great. <laughs> so I'm going to give this a little stir and try not to avalanche. Okay, well, avalanche would have been a flood. Should I have my little ghosts on it? I feel like the glass is actually going to crack soon because it's like really not, like it's not safety glass by any definition. It would totally like break with putting under enough pressure. There's a hard crack there. I got it on discount because the smile on one of the ghosts was already chipped anyway. <laughs> um, so I, I'm not optimistic for the life of this glass, but I'm enjoying it while I have it. <laughs> um, and I have a little straw here. So yes, I am the cliche and I don't care. <laughs> mm. Sorry, just uh, enjoying my cold drink. Also, you can't see it, but my ice is skull shaped. I have so many ice trays. I got like obsessed with ice really suddenly when I started drinking coffee because I only like iced coffee. Um, but I got cute little ice molds. So I have skull ones, I have rose ones, and then I have little paw prints, which I think are really cute. I had the paw prints in this one because it's the only thing that can fit through the small hole. Um, but yeah. <laughs> got a little work intermission. I hope Willow didn't say anything that would get me banned while I was away. <laughs> I am an adult woman. <laughs> Shut up.
I'm more of a mocha drinker, but this vanilla is really good. It only tastes like the official store one that they make in store when I put the squirt of cream on it for some reason. Maybe it's to do with the 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 thickness and the liquid density and the pure sugar that is in whipped cream, maybe. <laughs> um, but it's really good. But normally I have the Nescafe double mocha, but I just felt like French vanilla today. My tub's nearly empty. I need to get more. <sighs> some of these chocolate sprinkles that haven't dissolved. Don't mind me being gross. It's okay. This is my channel. I can do what I want here. Uh, I can see myself just in a little lag there. Oh, this is great. I'm kind of enjoying this little intermission between works. This is very motivational to actually get work done, you know, live streaming it. Uh, how long have we been going? An hour and ten minutes and I actually don't have any desire to stop anytime soon. I'm really enjoying myself. Uh, if I could do this like every week, I feel like I'm going to try and do this every week. Because normally I would have done this on a Thursday because like the past couple of weeks I've been off from my part-time job, which I used to, so I definitely have bills covered. Like business is my primary career in my head and I've had it for like since 2017, so what's that, like six years? I've had my business for like six years. I'm sort of pivoting. I feel like the first couple of years of my career were, in, were stunted because of personal circumstances that I'm not going to go into because it's kind of a bummer. Um, but I'm changing my model now. So I'm trying to pivot less towards actively having clients and actually just having digital products that I sell, which some of them are going to be service-based. So I still have my um, custom content calendars, which I'll link for you now, actually. Just so we can, while we're talking about this. Uh, where is it? Customize content calendar. Da -da -da. Yeah, so this is like my main service based product I have available, which I, I create them. So it's like customized marketing strategy. For content marketing but it's all automated so you only need to put in a little information at checkout and then you can buy it you never have to have any back and forth discussions with me which i know is super appealing to some people because they don't want to have to like i know it's old school business people who i work with they really want a point of contact and they want a meeting every week and i just do the thing give the thing back done we're good <laughs> sort of, we're, we are of mutual understanding we're great let's just move on with our lives and let's not have to constantly be in contact to achieve an objective. I feel like that's a generational thing because I am just barely Gen Z, but <laughs> I feel like we're all just a bit more efficient in that way. Watch me get cancelled by like all my older clients now, but <laughs> I'm constantly commendated on my efficiency and my speed and stuff I do and the depth of what I do. So I feel like I've cracked the code. Just need to let everyone else know. <laughs> uh, right. What am I doing now? I think I'll start writing the next paragraph. What we're we doing? We're on touch points. So let me get back to the page. Let me actually share my screen. There you go. I never listened this far in the Stream Beats playlist either. I really like it. I hope I'm not going to run out soon or else I'm going to have to loop back through. I could do ones of other genres, but we'll see. So, what are touch points? Copy the silver. Okay. In, oh, is it nineteen eighty seven? I think it was. Oh, look at me. Okay. In 1987, Dr. Jeffrey Lant, is it a single? Uh, how do I spell his name? Don't get the name wrong. Yeah, it was a single. Okay, okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Dr. Jeffrey Lant created his book. Oh, is it called Making Money? marketing da, 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 da. when you make your marketing oh god it's so simple it's always the easy stuff 
I must have ADHD, honestly. <laughs> His... Uh, created. He created his book, Money Making Marketing. I say published. Published his book, Money Making Marketing. Okay. In 1987, only four years, four years, only four years after the invention of the internet. Dr. Jeffrey Lamb published his book on money making marketing. It presented the concept of touch points. And how they contribute to marketing. Okay, what are touch points? And then I had. Oh, okay, wait, before I forget, let's create another one duplicated here. The rule of seven. Let's bring that down here. I'll separate it out. Get a few more headings in. Okay. What are touch points? In 1987, in the four years after the invention of the internet, Dr. Jeffrey Lamp published his book Money Making Marketing. Quotation marks. It presented the concept of touch points and how they contribute to the sales funnel. But two ice cubes are stuck together and just will not break apart, so I can't like stir it easily. <laughs> oh, okay. And how they contribute to the sales flow. A touch point is any interaction a customer has with an organization. Examples of touch points could be more obvious than others, such as okay, do you do a list? Do a list? Do a list? So we have to turn one into a list. Do I have to do a separate text box for this? Mm. Paste style. Okay. Paragraph. Doesn't mention the list here. Some sometimes it separates them out. Bulleted list. There we go. Okay. Such as billboards. Forgotten every touch point in the name of God. Oh my God, stupid brain. <sighs> touch boards. Right, I literally have examples here. Why am I doing this to myself? Copy this. Signage would incl include billboards, so. Social media, emails, SMS, signage, pay recommendations, events, billing invoices. market stalls web pages news publications I'm gonna put in my <laughs> Staff interactions. Okay. I'm not going to put in the whole wallet example. That would be silly. Okay. <laughs> Alright. List is pad that out a little bit. Got a bit of a gap here. Do I like. I don't, want, I don't particularly want a gap this big. Can get rid of the padding. No, there's no padding on it. 
Uh, I guess I could reduce the margin, but I don't like giving stuff a negative margin because it just looks kind of messy. Um... Do I just have an extra line here that I don't need? No, why is that? Okay. It's the 1.5 spacing, but I do that because sometimes it glitches out when I publish it. Oh my god, I'll live it. I'll live with it. I'll live, I'll live it for now. Besides the negative margin layer. Oh my god, I was just break. That's where I suddenly become a coffee ASMR channel, wait. <laughs> Did I do it? Did I break it? No, I didn't break it. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. In 1987, only four years after the invention of the internet, Dr. Jeffrey Lamp published the book Money Making Marketing. It presented the concept of touch points and how they contribute to the sales goal. A touch point is an a touch point is any interaction a customer has with an organization. Examples of touch points could be more obvious than others, such as and then list. Um, I feel like I want another micro paragraph before I move on to the rule of seven. What else have I got? Mm -mm. Thinking time. So while I'm thinking, when did the internet go public? Okay, so 1993. Okay, so I can talk about that. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Research, this is why research is important, people. Okay. The internet wasn't available for general public use until about 1993. Before that time, fuck it I'm putting in my <laughs> putting in my wallet acknowledgement. Before that time the majority Before that time, the internet was restricted to primarily university staff. Uh, no, university researchers in order to share information between distant, distant organizations. Oh, where was Jeffrey Lan a professor? Because he was the university doctor. Uh, doctor Jeffrey Lant. Cambridge? Is he at Cambridge now or was he Cambridge? Because I'm pretty sure Doctor Jeffrey Lan is still alive. Like, don't quote me on that. Like, I hope something unfortunate has not happened today. But I think he's still alive. Uh, doctor Jeffrey Lant. Oh God. Obituary. Don't. I'm gonna have to look at it now, and I. Uh no, Jeffrey. Literally, I've literally got goosebumps cold. Like I feel like I jinxed that. Uh. <laughs> Doctor has been a student of twelve universities worldwide, including the University of Dijon, as in the mustard. <laughs> um. Okay. I feel like it was Harvard he was at when 
he made money making marketing. Uh, let's see. Can you even hear me? I, I know I've moved my microphone a little bit because I'm leaning. Um, the University of Munich, the University of St. Andrews, the University of California, Santa Barbara, the University of California, Santa Cruz, and Northeastern University. Dr. Lance's program on consulting, sponsored by Oklahoma State University, was the first university program to be broadcast from outer space. Go, Jeffrey. Uh, the initial broadcast was over 30 universities. Dr. Lant has taught over 30 universities across the world, including the University of Maine, Boston University, University of Connecticut, Holster University, University of Pittsburgh, Chapin College. This is very American focused. I, I admit I don't know if he was an American or a British man, but I could have sworn he was British. <laughs> or at least like he, he did stuff in England, like I talked about Cambridge earlier. For many years, he's written books on a wide variety of essential subjects. These subjects include business development, marketing, copywriting, publishing, non-profit fundraising, public relations, and consultings. Uh, they also include volumes on animal rights, the British monarchy, vegetation. So why do I feel like Jeffrey wrote this himself? It's drjeffreylant.com and it's not a secure website, which leads me to believe that his SSL certificate may have lapsed. So if it's because of his timely passing, then that would kind of make sense. Although I hope it's not. Um, also, why is it letting me into a non-secure website? Like, if it doesn't have an SSL certificate, I should have got a pop-up warning, like, yo, don't do that. <laughs> Noted. You might think that at the age of 71, with so many published materials and a host of prizes indicating how popular my publications are, that I wish that I would wish to retire, to lounge and snooze over someone else's hard work. But you see, my work can never be finished, because every time I put fingers to the keyboard, I like to believe I am changing the world just a little bit. And when one knows one is doing good, there is no argument. Give me go. Jeffrey sounds like my kind of guy. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't imagine I'm ever going to stop doing stuff. I feel stressed when I'm not making content of some form. <laughs> so, oh, I hope Jeffrey's, like, I was going to say I hope Jeffrey's okay. I suspect Jeffrey's not okay, <laughs> considering that linked from his obituary. But, I don't know. Jeffrey, reach out if you're there. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Jeffrey. I can't find proof he's actually dead. I can't find a death date anywhere. But like, I think he might be all right. <laughs> okay, Dr. Jeffrey Lan. Money making marketing. You can still buy his book. I haven't actually read the whole book. I've just read excerpts. I would love to read that book, to be honest. Maybe get another day. Okay, where was Dr. Jeffrey Lance when he wrote Money Making Marketing? That's what I want to know. I feel like writing such a lengthy question is like, it's a long tail keyword and I don't think someone's going to answer it. Money Making Marketing. Da, 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 da. Okay, wait. Dr. Jeffrey Lant University 1987. Where was he at that time? Cambridge. Is it Cambridge? Seriously, is it Cambridge? I feel like it's Cambridge. Hmm. One Quora, don't fail me. I'm gonna be the professional forum. Apparently, you're much better than Reddit. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Wait, did Jeffrey Lant answer this by himself? Oh my guy. <laughs> oh, Cambridge MA. So, yeah, he's probably American. I, like, I accept he was probably American before, but when I think Cambridge, I just think the UK version. <laughs> Oh, I love this. He's he's just copied and pasted from the web page, and it's written like not in the first person, but it says that it's him. So unless someone is running his Quora account, then it's committed to the bit. 
it's like maybe it is another older generational thing like we must appear more professional like how dare you have a human face to a brand even when it's just you uh honestly guy i'm struggling my harvard a love story by jeffrey lant did he do fanfic in his spare time i imagine he's just talking about how this little time working that was but you know he was written that many books maybe he got bored i'm just saying <laughs> Right, okay. So, the internet wasn't available to the general public use. Before that time, the internet was restricted to primarily to university research in order to share information between different organizations. Uh, I can't say which university is at, but I'm just gonna be like, this would have afforded Dr. Lant more of an insight into how future technology would develop and i'm sure he thought like i don't think anyone in 1993 could have predicted exactly where the internet was gonna go but i think a dude with this sort of vast array of business knowledge had some notion that it could be monetized in a way and how to use it to interact with people so it's just it's just spreading information the information you choose to communicate is entirely up to you but it's just spreading information so i think jeffrey may be clued up maybe jeffrey just would have been an influencer in a, if he was born in a later time who knows <laughs> or maybe you would have brain rotted because you know there's so much stuff to consume you couldn't choose a certain thing i imagine there are many people who could have been much more focused if they didn't just doom scroll all the time hot take uh let's see This could have afforded differently. Okay. And how it would play into the business world. The internet is just a means of delivering communications after all. Oh, this song sounds good. I like this. Well, assuming I don't get mad copyright flagged, I am definitely going to be using this music for every stream in the future because I love it. Uh, okay. Let me duplicate this. Let's talk about the rule of seven. The rule of seven is a rule Jeffrey Lant came up with in relation to touch points. He believed that a customer would need a minimum of Oh, I hate this because I, I like the way the, le the the letter seven. I like the way the number seven looks, but if you do like some of words, some with the number, then that just looks really messy in terms of like writing content. So I'm just gonna stick with the word because I can't just put the I can't put the number seven in the subheading. Okay, needs a minimum of seven touch points with a business in order to purchase from them. It may be higher if the product or service was a high ticket offer. But the number of touch points would always be a multiple of seven. Hmm? Yeah, seven. Now with the internet 
creating an oversaturation of constantly rotating focus of constantly rotating stories and information pulling viewers attention in different directions it's widely acknowledged that more touch points will need to be created in order to make a meaningful impact on the customer but in turn it's now also easier to create an ever present Should I write ever present or omnipresent? Because I like the term omnipresent, but people associate it with like omnipresent, omnipresent, on omnipotent, omniscient, like you know, godly words, all that stuff. Um, no. I'll keep it. I'll keep it layman's terms. Some people might not know the word. Whatever. Okay. To create an ever present. Fuck it. I'll do both. Omniscient. What, do you think hmm? about the what was that noise? What the notifications, notifications everywhere. Oh, I've acknowledged my phone and now it's all catching up. Uh. <laughs> well, I've not got any dividends yet today. I feel like I'm due a dividend. I feel like I'm due a dividend, like a dividend but I've not got it yet. Oh well. It's now easier to create an ever present omniscient feel around your brand oh it was the whatsapp noise it's an advert please don't fly me for the adverts i really i don't know i just i don't want to pay for more subscriptions guys okay i don't need them all i don't use spotify that much pretty much other than this what i'm using spotify for right now i pretty much only use it to watch the distractible podcast so please please don't take me down uh what a present omniscient feel around your brand despite the increase and competitors. Okay. I feel like we have a reasonable like this is like a solid amount of text on a page right now. I'm just I'm gonna say it. I think this is an okay amount of text. I'm gonna flush it out a tiny bit more. And I definitely need the images. I need to have a photo shoot day. Like no joke. But we're getting somewhere. Little seven. Okay, I've lost my track on this paragraph, so the rule of seven is a rule Jeffrey Lank came up with in relation to touch points. He believed that a customer would need a maximum of seven touch points of a business in order to purchase from them. It may be higher if the product or service is a high ticket offer, but the number of touch points would always be a multiple of seven. Now with the int now with the internet creating an oversaturation of constantly rotating stories and information pulling the viewers attention in different directions it's widely acknowledged that with, that more touch points will need to be created in order to make a meaningful impact on the customer but in turn it's now also easier to create an ever-present omniscient feel around your brand despite the increase in competitors due to the 24-7 nature of being online in the modern day still bugging me i don't know what jeffrey lance about but i'm kind of <laughs> i want to know guy <laughs> reach out i'm sure you know how <laughs> quite frankly even if the man has passed i'm sure i'll work out how to possess my laptop just to let me know seems like the kind of dude who wouldn't stop learning even after the grave i would hope that's me <laughs> I made more coffee than could actually fit in the glass and I have a lot of ice left so I feel like I need to go for round two but I also kind of need to pee so <laughs> please excuse my break that has lasted much more longer than reasonable so <laughs> well no don't, like I'm taking a break when I want a break I'm not even going to explain it <laughs> wait a lot 
take over. <laughs> Okay, I feel rejuvenated. <laughs> and yes, I do have an ensuite. Are you jealous? <laughs> uh, okay, right. How long have I been live for? Let me see. All right, we're coming. We're coming to the two-hour mark. I should probably wrap up kind of soon. I wanted to finish this page like in a day, but evidently that's not going to happen. I made a lot more progress on it than I was expecting to. Live streaming definitely helps me actually focus. <laughs> Uh, what helps me do my job? Showing off to other people. Maybe I'm just a massive attention whore and I need that to be motivated. Who knows? Ugh. Ooh, round two of this coffee is so much better than round one was. Oh, it's not a time to get cold enough yet. It's getting there. Let's sit for a little longer. Didn't add as much milk to that one. Maybe I got the ratio better. But that's the bottom of the jug now, so I will not be doing round three of my adult milkshake just for anyone judging. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, I feel like we covered the rule of seven. All right. I feel like I want at least one more segment. But what could I do? Close that now. Close that. Hmm. I 
feel like I'm still not going to go into nearly as much depth as MailChimp did. Like, MailChimp earned their top search engine result ranking, okay? They earned it. There is no debate. They earned this ranking. But I don't think I'm going to be able to compete with it. I think what I'm going to do is... Because I said... Somewhere I wrote... Wait. Digital marketing is how you get yourself seen online. Content creation is making sure your target markets care once you've, you're in front of them. Okay, I'm gonna steal this line from myself. Content creation versus digital marketing. That can be a stop header. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay, right. Copy, paste. Change this divider color. Where is it? Different color, different color. What color do I need? This one. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, I think that looks good. I think that looks good. Okay. <laughs> Don't get lost in the tunes. Okay, right, right, wait, wait, wait. Wanted the text content from my PowerPoint. Where did it go? Okay. Okay. That's the text. Duh, duh. And I want this. Can it no, no. Duplicate. Drag it over here. Oh, uh, do I want that style? No, okay, 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 wait, 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 wait. Hmm. Okay. I'll clean up the format in a minute. Finish writing the text. Finish writing the text. Okay. What is the sales funnel? Copy. Paste. Delete. Oh, no, wait. Okay, if I go into my videography page, I think I have this exact thing that I need. Oh, wait, okay. Videography. The one that's on, there you go. it's on the black grey background so I need the same colours and we need consistency across the whole website or else it doesn't work <laughs> pretty sure I didn't change any of the colours there but now I know now I know <laughs> okay uh, okay what is the sales funnel no we need um digital marketing versus content creation digital marketing so you get yourself seen online content creation is making so sure your target markets care once you're in front of them to learn more about content creation check out no 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 click here to learn more about content creation and for now I'm gonna link to the blog category because the content creation page doesn't exist yet but I will change that later oh my jaw's acting up 
I have really bad luck draw because they never took my wisdom teeth out in time. I spent like a third of my life trying to get them to take my wisdom teeth out. When they finally did, it was already a bit fucked. And actually the week before I had my lower wisdom teeth taken out because they took the upper ones out and then they refused to take the lower ones out because they wouldn't come through. But then they realized they weren't coming through because they were never going to come through because they're practically horizontal in my mouth. <laughs> uh, so then they actually accepted me to go under when I said I wanted to go under the first time and it was traumatizing. But the week before that, I had a competition, it was kind of a rough one, and I had a fight, and I was getting battered. Like, someone came up to me later, and he was like, so I'm trying to be so brave, and it's like, um, no, I wanna win. But she kicked me so hard in the face. Like, I had a gum shield and I had my helmet on, but it didn't even matter. And um, this feels like it's more martial arts channel related, but whatever. Um, and she <laughs> kicked me with like a reverse turning kick, which is basically taking a heel straight to the face of a lot of wind up. And I didn't realize until later when I was on the train trying to eat, but my jaw had partially dislocated and I was there on a very crowded train, very silently trying to not have a panic attack because like, I'm I'm halfway across the country, I need to get home. It's kind of non-optional. If it is dislocated, I'll sort that later. So I was just there, but I was hungry. So I was just there trying to fix my jaw and I eventually put it back in place. It was this side that came off. And I eventually put it back in place and I was like, okay. And then I just started eating because I was starving. <laughs> like most people probably be a bit sensitive and let it calm down for a minute. Nope, eat right away. And that was like a week or so before I had my wisdom teeth out. So I told them about it when I went to the hospital. Um, and they were like, is there anything we need to know before we do the surgery and put you under? And I'm like, well, maybe. Don't know how this will affect you. but And then I heard them talking about me later in like a group. I don't think they were doing a briefing or anything. I feel like they were just talking about me. <laughs> so that's quite funny. Oh, my drink's getting cold now. But basically, I think I'm going to have was like jaw problems forever now. I think it's just ground away enough at the bones that it doesn't have a stable socket to go into. Or my hinge or whatever. But I get by. It's okay. Kind of like a rubbish snake. Kind of like how my psoriasis makes me a rubbish wolverine. <sighs> right. What is this? Shut up. Stop. Give me flies. I'm just gonna have to talk nonsense until it goes. Okay, so I want the content creation tabs, and we have this. And those are my blogs that I've got tags with content creation on them, which are pretty much all my blogs. I need to catch up and write more blogs, to be honest. The one thing I want from AI is I want to be able to put in a video I've made and said, turn this into an SEO optimized blog in the writing style of all of the blogs that exist on the website. That is the only thing I really want AI for, because as we can work out, my my thoughts are best expressed verbally, visually, with my actual mouth. Trying to put it through into the written word. I'm a good writer and I know that because people are paying me to write for them and because I have had like published written works like poetry and news articles and stuff. Ever since I was a kid I've always been like getting success with writing but it takes so much more time for me to think of it that way. So that's what I want AI for. <laughs> okay so I want this link. Click here to learn more about content creation. Link. Do do. Okay. So then we got that, and then we want to get the footer. Because yeah. this footer, like the the making it smoothly go into the actual footer itself, is like I need to have the page divider to make it look that cool. So I have to copy it onto every single page. So. this copy and paste it onto my new page paste okay uh. What do I want to link to here? Can you use them online. For my content creation page, I feel like I could be like, don't want to make your own? Check out our store, but hmm, want to keep learning. Learning how to spell about digital marketing. Read our blog.
and link to www.com forward slash blog. Okay. So let's get this formatted properly. So this all looks fine. This looks fine. What is the sales funnel? I feel like I need a little text box here. Hmm. So this is a H1 heading. This is H2. This is sales funnel. I want to make this one a H2 as well. So, oh, I was just on the video page. Ah, okay, 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 okay. What color is it? Is it purple? Was it purple? Purple, okay. Purple. Nope, gotta go to the videography page. Really, I should just keep all these tabs open, but it just bugs me having... <laughs> no, that's a lie. It doesn't bug me having a lot of tabs. It bugs me having like a million website tabs open because before I got a better hosting provider, it would just freeze up my whole website and make everything slower and I just couldn't do a thing until it was done. Okay, purple. Edit. Oh, now my ice is melting. Like it's still cold, but it's just that spending big chunks of ice. Okay. Here are examples of videos I've made, by the way. Check these guys out. They're actually really cool. I, I pretty much never worked with a client who I hated, which I'm, I'm really lucky to say that. I had some non-paying clients when I was like a student. I have never taken a non-paid client ever since I opened my business. I have never done it. I refuse. Um, but <laughs> when I was a student, I had a lot of clients who were total waste of space but everyone who i've ever worked with who especially people who are featured on my website are really cool so check them out you can find links to all this stuff on my page www.digital.com forward slash videography because there's the videos i made for them okay copy okay so pay style what are touch points uh, but then we want to centralize it. Centralize it, centralize it. Okay. But then I want to put it up here. Oh, this is hard. No, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. This one also is on the video. So that one had a separate title one. Okay, wait. Duplicate. Copy and then paste style. Um, oh, again, questionable. No, 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 no. Okay, so we want no bottom one. No shape divided. Okay, bottom, none. Okay. 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 So we want less padding. Oh god, alright. Uh, let's reduce, reduce, reduce. Just keep reducing. Zero. I'm just gonna zero that out. Zero, 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 zero. What are touch points? Copy. Style. What are touch points? I love this font, but I have to use it sparingly on my website because I feel like it's not the easiest to read, which is why I can only keep on like headers. Delete, 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 delete. Where's the delete? Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Heading, I want zero. 
zero. Am I good? Yeah, I don't inherently need the padding on these either. It was just for that certain page, so. Zero, zero. Okay, I feel like this is looking a lot better now. What are touch points? Mm, give you a little padding on the bottom, like 10. 10. This is styling. So I feel like the way I would describe. Oh no, now I need 10 up there. Okay. 10? Need to get that. The, the, the divider, the divider, the divider, the divider. Tilt, top. Top, none. Tilt, bottom. Why is that on the. What? <laughs> so it's on the bottom, so it comes from the bottom. Okay. Oh, I need this to be a nice rounded number now. 175. Uh, it's kind of pushing it for my personal comfort level there. 165, maybe. 165. Okay, one six five is acceptable. Because yeah, like one six seven eight is very weird. But okay, right. What is the sales funnel? So that is there, and then we got the different individual points of the sales funnel. And then we got that there. So we had the little section. Okay, so this is a H two heading. This is a H two heading. That's a H two, and then this is a H three. But this doesn't know it's a H three. So that's a H three. And that's a H3 because we've got to get hierarchy right or else it's all going to go to pot. So this one's a H3 as well. H3 because of what, how are the bots going to know. H3. 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 Okay, so this one is a H2. And that knows that. So then the rule of seven is a H3. H3. And then this is a H2. And it knows that. Okay, 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 okay. So then centralize this one like that. And centralize this, centralize, 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 centralize everything. Just centralize. Ah, okay, right. So then that's right, 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 right. Oh, then the question is do I want to centralize these? Because I did just say centralize everything, but. Hmm. I feel like that makes it look a little better. It's always hard to know, like, when do you keep consistency between pages and when do you just do what looks prettier? I feel like when you're on an individual page, you should just go for what looks prettier. Because we've got the certain things that are the same. Like the fonts and the colors and stuff. Okay, so... Oh, but then I can't centralize the list, really. So what do I do here? Let's see. Because if I do it with this, it'll look wrong. Oh, God. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, that's that's gonna stay like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, the horror. Okay, all right. Seven. That is. That's already central. Make this one centralized. And that's actually gonna make the slant easier to accommodate. That looks better. Okay. Central, 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 central. Um. This needs some padding. So that's not gonna work. That needs some space away. Separation. Okay. And bottom. Just one. Okay, just one. All right, okay. So, uh, I don't really get any benefit from leaving this off my website right now. Like it's it, right now it just links to the wrong place. So although I'm going to improve it, it's never too late to improve a web page. Like stuff gets re-indexed all the time. So I feel like having this content will actually improve it even though it hasn't got the images. So. Like, don't shoot me, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just going to publish it. Although I'm going to preview it first just to make sure it actually looks proper because the aspect ratio is all messed up when it's got the edit bar stuff. Uh, don't block the pop-up window. I want to see the pop-up window. I want to see my preview. Let's see. It is not ideal. But I actually think that looks pretty damn good. Like, it just needs the rich media. And I think that's acceptable for what I need it for. Alright, publish that. 
and then real quick I will show you while that's loading and we'll give that a second to process so let me go on to my Adobe stock you'll see that I made a sale since last time I went live and maybe made a couple I can't remember exactly what I had when I last went live but I thought none of my images reviewed and we did that like a month ago so unless it's changed in the time I've been streaming just giving it to load okay so I had 71 originally and then does that thing where it vanishes but I can see it there I can see it there why is it unless it's rejected every single one of them right now nope not rejected so 71 there we go they're all still in review it says it could take up to four weeks it used to take like a few days and this this new delay adobe stock has just been from since they've started accepting ai content and i can't say i approve of it because i the moral argument around using ai anyway i don't agree with it i'm sure my content's probably been used to generate ai stuff and i don't appreciate it but i wouldn't know i haven't taken time to research it uh, but yeah so that has let's go to change to dip that has been published so what we're going to do now is we're going to go instead of being in the elemental page editor we are going to go into the base wordpress function so this is on every wordpress website even the ones that don't have elemental don't pay for that uh so if we go into the back end we can go on to appearance Oops, excuse me hiccups again go on to appearance customize There's a couple ways we can do this, but I'm doing this in the customized way. So go into my menus. It's my post categories menu. Do I have new categories? I feel like, no, product categories menu. There you go. I feel like I added a new category recently. What was it? Where was it? Where was it? Cause I'm gonna multitask with this. Categories, WooCommerce endpoints, no. No. Yeah, I was gonna add pages on web design and email marketing. I've got them. I've not got them ready. I've got the titles ready there. I've made a page, I haven't done anything. Product categories. Okay, right. Photo books, content idealists. I feel like I had like personalized products. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So we've gone to my primary menu, which is my mega menu, which is up here. So right now. The content creation category is considered the parent, which is not what we want. That's not that's not how that's gonna work. So I need to add what I've created now before we do anything. So add items, pages. So digital marketing. The elemental page. So that's what that is up here. So we're gonna scroll up here. Digital marketing. Uh, don't do that okay that's added and it's added where'd it go it's added at the bottom so bring it up here <laughs> and we're gonna take it up slowly without trying to wreck my entire menu <laughs> where is it where is it where is it okay digital marketing there so it's its own page we're removing that okay so those have become main pages so then we're gonna do no what no no ah what did i do <laughs> wait okay social media social media no don't do that oh the focus right now can you tell why is it not <laughs> I am evacuating and I'm going to do this the other way because that's complicated. Yep, lose the changes. <laughs> Let's go and do this the more simple back end way. I wanted to do it the pretty way, but never mind because I'm not going to mess that up right now on my live website. It's better to accept a failure <laughs> than to ruin something that you've worked hard on. It's a very obscure moral lesson. So instead. <laughs> We do it here. Primary menu. So we're going to add uh, 
Where are my pages? Pages here. Most recent digital marketing. Add to menu. It's down here at the bottom. So. If I just edit it. Okay. Move out from under digital marketing. Okay, SEO. And then do this one. Move out from under SEO. Okay. Digital marketing. Removing this from the menu. So we're going to bring up digital marketing. Up here. Oh, come on, keep scrolling. I don't want to let go. <laughs> All right. Currently, it's above the shop. Never mind. Digital marketing. Collapse that so we get more scrolly space. <laughs> oh, it's like I'm disarming a bomb. <laughs> right. So social media marketing goes under there. And SEO goes under there as well. And when I create it, email marketing and web design will also go into digital marketing. So it won't look like such an empty category. So we're going to check that I haven't messed up anything else there. Home, content creation, roll that there. Digital marketing, it does there. About the owner, it does there. Blog, da 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 shop my account so all the account functions and contact us okay so save menu and we'll give that a moment to process while the caching catches up hmm. it's gonna take a solid moment So I hope everyone's been enjoying themselves. We've gone for over two hours now. This is my longest live stream. I've actually quite enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, just me working at home, doing stuff I need to do, but feeling motivated to do it because now people are supposedly staring at me. But no, honestly, I'm probably going to do this. I'm not setting a schedule because that's just setting yourself up for failure. But I am probably going to do this like at least one day a week, every week. So. Plus, all my live streams get automatically added to my live stream playlist when I've completed it. So if you don't catch me when I'm actually live, then you can always go back and watch them, and you can watch previous ones. You can see my progress. Um, I've known to, I've been known to like go and finish up tasks that I do on live stream after I'm off stream because I need to go get a bit. Like right now, I need to create some photos to add to that page so it's not as like pathetic as it currently is. Um, but yeah. Let me just see if that's processed. It should have done by now. Let me just purge the cache. Caching is like a saved version of something, so it doesn't have to load it fresh every time, and then it can actually get a faster loading page thing. So now, if we go to visit site, open the new tab, check it out. So, closing the page that we were working on before, we're on our home page. Now, click on content creation, it will still take us through to the categories of the posts on the blog. But if you click on digital marketing, it will now take us to the parent page. So I just need to get some photos for that parent page and then I'd say we've got a solid parent page done. So yeah. I think I'm gonna start wrapping up now because like I said, I do still need to record my proper video, which I'll probably do on the sales phone now because I'm quite interested in that. I'm just gonna check on my friends that they're picking up tomorrow because maybe, maybe I can Oh wait, let me respond to my boyfriend. I'm just wrapping up. This music has been good. I've liked this music. Okay, so if I can just check on my friends so that they are picking me up, then maybe I can record it tomorrow morning before I get all icky. Oh, they'll get me at 10.15. Oh. <laughs> If I can be an early bird, then I can probably record my video beforehand. I think it's getting to... I've always been one who has tea really early because I did that thing where I would go to school. And like When I went to primary school, literally, like it carried on my entire life. But when I went to school, I would eat then. And then that sort of breaks up my day and I can then have my free time and I don't have to worry about doing anything later. So once I wrap this up and get all my like after stream stuff finished up, then I will probably make some food because I'm kind of hungry. Not really starved, but I'm kind of hungry. Bing. 
And then I am going to see if I have the energy because I feel like I've been on for quite a while now. Not that I like really. When I live stream, I definitely play less of a character than when I'm recording a normal video. Not that I'm trying to play a character, but just I'm delivering some information. And when you work in digital stuff, you have to be very specific with your words or else you start confusing one concept with another. Like I mix up header and heading all the time and they mean different things. It's kind of high pressure. And sometimes I'll find myself halfway through a sentence and then just not finish it. And cause I'm like pre-recording. I'm conscious about wanting to deliver my thought in a concise sentence to make the editing easier. And if I need to repeat something, then I try and repeat the whole thing that I've just said. And because I don't script properly, I just write like talking points. That's kind of hard to do. So hopefully I'll be able to record tonight. But if not, I'll record tomorrow and that'll be okay. But I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see a live stream soon of me doing my photo shoot. Because shooting conceptual stuff like digital marketing shots <laughs> means I kind of need to shoot the equipment that I would be using to shoot. And it's kind of difficult. But yeah, I'm going to say gonna wrap up now thank you for watching uh check out my links in the chat for where you can buy my products to support me i have my own online store dubdubdigital.com forward slash shop and if i can sell some more digital products or some new customized content calendars for you people who need help with digital marketing content strategy then i would not only love to help you with that because it's one of my favorite things in the world coming up with ideas for content and actually you know getting stuff produced for people to see online but it would mean I could do more of this without having to be too concerned about when I need to stop and sleep. <laughs> so thank you very much and have a good day.